In this video, I'll show you how to wire a Fantech radon fan. Now this would apply to all Fantech fans except for the EC models and the slimline models. Let's say this is our old fan that we've removed from the radon system and we want to reuse this cord. So you don't have to buy a new cord. However, if you don't have a cord, we'll put a link in the description to the cord that we use. You may have an outside system that is hardwired and in conduit. However, you want to make sure that you've shut off the switch to the outside system and then I'd also make sure you shut off the breaker just to ensure there's no chance that you get electrocuted. All right, now that you've got your radon fan removed, you can use a Phillips screwdriver and remove the screws that hold on the electrical box cover. And then we can take this terminal block off and we're gonna to wanna to loosen the wires for the cord. It's gonna be the white and the black. And now we've got our cord disconnected. There is no ground in this series of fans. Now, if you had an outside system, you're gonna have the black and the white wire hooked up just like that. Your process is gonna be the same. The ground wire will not be hooked up to anything. So next, it's time to remove the cord by removing this bushing. If you've got an outside system, the process is gonna be similar. However, you're gonna use a flat blade screwdriver to kind of knock this loose. You might have to put it on there and then hit it. You're gonna remove the threads on that and that'll allow you to take this out of the junction box. But I find a lot of these uh, rubber O-rings are deteriorated and cracked on uh, outside systems where I have to replace that. So to replace it, we'll put a link down in the description to the 90 degree turn here. So next we can remove this cord. So we are gonna use our channel lock pliers and we're gonna loosen the outer nut. And then I'm also gonna remove this wire nut. And now we've got our cord removed. So I'm gonna use the channel locks here and we've got that nut removed as well. So what I'm gonna do is start with putting this cord through the cord bushing, and we want this rounded end to go towards the plug on the cord. Now that we've got that done, I'm just gonna straighten up the loose strands of these wires. Since we don't use the ground, you could cut that off. I like to put a wire nut on it just so I don't have a bare wire uh, where I could touch one of the other terminals in here. You could use electrical tape. Now we're ready to install the cord grommet and the cord, so we are gonna run these wires through the hole in the electrical box, and then we're gonna install this locking nut. The flat side goes towards the electrical box. And then we'll get that cord started, the cord grommet started. And then I'm gonna use the needle nose pliers so that I can hold that inner nut tight maybe a quarter turn, fast hand tight. They are plastic threads, so you don't have to over tighten anything. And then we're gonna hook the white wire on the cord. This would be the same if you have Romex. We've got the white going to the blue side of the terminal block. We're just gonna put that in. And then we're gonna use the flat blade screwdriver to tighten that up. Just have it snug. On these wires, I have got exposed maybe three eighths to half an inch of wire exposed there. The ones that come on this kit are a little bit longer and you get a little bit of wire that sticks outside the terminal block. So I like to just trim it a little bit just so I can avoid any shorts that might happen. Next, the black wire on the cord goes to the black and the red part of this terminal box or in the middle. And then I'm gonna put on that wire nut to avoid that loose wire in there. And then we're gonna put this terminal block on side or onto these two posts here. We'll get that lined up with the holes inside the terminal block. Now that we know everything fits and we've got enough slack in or out of this, we can tighten up this. And this is what actually holds the cord in place and provides the locking mechanism for it. I can't pull or push that cord out. And again, the process would be the same, except this would be going in the wire nut or sorry, the O-ring goes on the outside and that's gonna keep the water and stuff out of that electrical box. And then this would go inside and kind of tighten everything up to the electrical box. The next step would be to reinstall your fan and then turn the power back on to ensure that your radon system is working. Be sure to check the description for links to other videos that show you how to replace your radon fan, as well as links to the products you've seen in this video. We also came up with a radon fan replacement guide that will help you determine what fan you should purchase to replace your radon fan. 
And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching.